Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. You're watching Swipe. On the show this week, smells like screen spirit. The cinema taking aim at all five of your senses. Record breakers. Apple makes huge profits at the end of 2014. And crime-solving skeletons, time travel and zombies. We've got it all in our games review. Hello and welcome to Swipe. This week we're at the UK's first ever 4DX cinema. We've all heard of 2D and 3D movies, but 4DX takes it a step further. Its makers claim it's a totally immersive experience. The seats move, you can get hit by wind and rain, and you can even smell what's going on on screen. Here's Stuart. If sights and sounds just aren't enough for you when you head to the cinema, how about this? It's called 4DX. Seats that move around, air, water and fog effects all synchronise to the action on screen. Even smells are on the menu. We've got eight different scents in here from Flower Shop, due to uh, white gardenia, coffee, raspberry, burning rubber, gun smoke. Test them by just opening the valve and then you'll smell the coffee smell coming out of there, which is pumped straight through to the auditorium. 4DX was developed by a South Korean cinema chain and made its debut in 2009. One of the first films to utilise it was Avatar. The technology has spread to more than 20 countries and now it's arrived in the UK. With the seats we can start with by making them all roll around a bit, so you can see that happening. Then on the seat effects we can do whatever we want, so we can have a bit of face water a bit of face air, so you'll start that, and all this can happen all at the same time, and all timed in with the movie. Probably the most important question here is, do you want this kind of experience at the cinema? How you answer that will determine whether 4DX can be a true success, or if it's dismissed as a gimmick. I really like all the stuff like the stroboscopic lights and the smoke coming out of the screen and the, the mist and things like that. I do find actually with the chair wobble, it's, a bit, it's so intense that you almost find yourself distracted from the image to some extent. So you sort of find yourself more focused on what's happening to your body than what's actually in front of your eyes. There's also the cost to consider. If you want to watch a film at this new screen in Milton Keynes, complete with splashes, fog, lightning and a moving chair, it will cost you from £13 to £15, pounds, depending on whether the movie is in 2D or 3D. I think it lends itself to certain types of films. Those big blockbuster films with lots of action will really do well out of something like this. This combines everything from maybe the theme park action through to a cinema going experience and I think that's really exciting. I don't think it will become the norm across all cinemas but it's definitely a nice added value. At the moment films aren't being made with 4DX in mind. The effects are bolted on to existing movies. Just like 3D and IMAX that could change Directors could one day have a hand in targeting all five of our senses. Well, we didn't come all this way just to let Stu have all the fun. It's time I had a go as well. OK, let's watch something. Let's do it. So what are these? These are 3D glasses. 3D glasses. Let's start the effects. Oh, but hang on. Am I going to get wet? Yes, of course. Can I, but can I opt to not have... Because it's quite cold. Can I opt to not have the wet? There's a little button here to turn it off if yes, you want please. to. Yes, please. All right, let's get to work. Hey, Rowan, are you so freaking out? No. Yes, you are. <laughs> Can somebody just walk me through what we're supposed to be doing? Woohoo! Woohoo! The seat's vibrating. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> just when you didn't think it could get any better, huh? Here we go. Oh, it's windy. Woo! <laughs> it's really windy. <gasps> it is, it is. So you've got wind effect up there. Whoa. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, I, I think we're going to go off the cliff in a second. Oh. <gasps> this really is like being on some kind of roller coaster. Awesome. Yeah. It's really awesome. I want to eat my popcorn. Can I eat it? You can. Uh, you may spill it. Is that it, dangerous? But uh, so we advise not to bring hot drinks. So Whoa, with this whole experience, no. Oh, right oh you're getting the wet. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 oh, we got wet there. Did you get wet? I 
I turned your water on. You turned it back on? Oh. Yeah, there's more. Oh, so oh the there's the water again. The it doesn't happen all the time. Anything that moves. But when it does happen, oh. it has real. Well, I was going to say, two and a half hours of this, yeah. pretty full on. <laughs> Dinosaurs look so real. Yeah. Oh, just. Is that a great experience? That's fantastic. Thank you for showing me that. It was a bit like a roller coaster, quite exhausting, and I'm a little bit annoyed that you turned my water back on. Ah, uh, well, you know, I wanted but, you to have the full effect. Well, I certainly got that, but hopefully I'll dry off soon. Thanks a lot. You're watching Swipe. Coming up, life is strange. We turn back the clock in our games review. But first, here's a roundup of some of this week's other tech stories. What a week it's been for Apple. The company announced it had made the biggest profit in corporate history, nearly £12 billion in the final three months of last year. The boost was largely driven by sales of the latest iPhone. A card game called Exploding Kittens has become the most backed Kickstarter project ever. Don't worry, it doesn't cause any actual harm to cats. The makers call it a kitty-powered version of Russian roulette and say they received 100% funding in just 20 minutes on the crowdfunding platform. The Google Lunar X Prize competition to land a private spacecraft on the moon is hotting up. Five of the teams from around the world competing to win have been awarded a milestone prize, a combined sum of nearly three and a half million pounds for the progress in innovation they've made so far. They've got until the end of next year to attempt the trip. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, we've got some pretty heavy stuff in this week's games review. Survival horror, epic sci-fi battles and time travel. But don't worry, we've thrown in a talking cartoon skeleton to lighten the mood. And Cameron Robinson is going to hold our hands throughout. So if you've been playing video games for a long time, you will know the name Grim Fandango. It's an absolute classic, kind of film noir, dark comedy tale. And you play a chap called Manny Calavera, and it's, it's a hilarious story. You basically are a travel agent in the land of the dead. So you kind of book people on these various trips, and, but you're kind of in like a dead-end job. But the big thing you notice is how hard it is. The puzzles are really tricky and the game doesn't hold your hand. So that's something that's really changed in video games. Nowadays there's so much more hints and tips. There's none of that. There's still none of that. But what's remastered? Well, it looks much better. The characters look beautiful and there's all this dynamic lighting. Um, but if you've never played Grim Fandango, then now is the perfect time to do so. You can get it on PlayStation, on your Vita and on PC as well. So Dying Light is arguably the biggest game coming out this week and I know you're thinking, do we really need another zombie game? And well, maybe we do. It's a bit different from other zombie games actually. It offers something, two things in fact, that are quite exciting. So first off, you can climb. Like, pretty much anything. There's a whole parkour aspect into the games. You can jump around the rooftops, because actually when the town is you know, infested with zombies, the rooftops are probably the safest place to be. But the other big difference about it is it's got an active day-night cycle. So that means time literally passes by. And what happens is at night time, everything changes. The zombies get a lot more difficult and dangerous. So you have to like sneak about. So you kind of become the hunty. But if this sounds like your cup of tea and you can stomach yet another zombie game, it's definitely worth checking out. So Life is Strange is something genuinely interesting coming out in the world of video games this, this week for, for a couple of reasons. First off, it's a, a single player adventure with a female lead, which is all too rare in the video games industry. So you play as Max, and she's a, a teenage girl who's gone back to what used to be her hometown. She went away and then she's back many years later as a teenager, and she's got this power to rewind time. And that's the kind of key mechanic in this whole video game. The way the gameplay is different from everything else is this time mechanic. So often in games where you have to make a decision, you're, you make a decision and then those consequences are there for the rest of the game. You can replay the game to see what the other decisions might have been. But in this game, you don't have to. You can make a decision, see how that goes, then rewind it and make another one. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, you should check it out. Well, that's it for this week. Don't forget you can stay up to date with all the latest tech stories on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone app, skynews.com, and our YouTube channel. But for now, I'm going to take on the full experience. See you next week. Bye-bye. Protectyourbubble.com, proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News.